Sam, when you just kicked the ball to that bloke, what went through your head for that split second? Did you, did, did you think at any point you'd play again? <laughs> no, I'm serious. If that had scored, that had been your last ever game. I swear to God, I'm not mucking about. Non-league football is under threat. Clubs in the National League are reaching a COVID-induced crossroads. To play without supporters in the stands, they believe the government were giving them grants, but have since found out they will be saddled with debt. With some clubs unable to sustain a season without fans through the turnstiles and unwilling to take on loans, they find themselves amidst an existential crisis. The current season may soon be curtailed. Still, nobody really knew that going into this game week, so we should enjoy one last pre-break match, oblivious to the clouds forming over the horizon. Great result the other night, great first half, fucking brilliant first goal, back to front, perfect. This mob, have, they've won their last five away games. You have to respect that shit, but I don't think they'll cope with that pace of play that we can bring. The reason they get results, it's plain and simple, it's the same reason that all average teams get fucking results. Because they've got a gaffer that's a good guy, that's good at getting into his team and getting the best from them. They know that they're on a hide into nothing. They're not under pressure to win. And they ain't ever going to just lose every week. So it's just an enjoyable situation. And for them, they get to go out week after week and try and nick a scalp like us. Okay? What they do do, they break on you like fuck. Get in front of the ball. For some reason, who got booked for standing in front of it the other day? Yeah, they, 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 that's good, no one likes you. But normally, no one fucking books anybody. So we get, the, we get it on the transfer, the whole time. The transfer is what kills all these teams against us, literally the whole time. How many fucking teams score as many back to front goals as us? It's a joke, how many? Seven days to think about winning is a fucking big deal. So let's make sure we fucking get over the line today so we can wake up every day for seven days thinking we fucking won. And that's a good fucking feeling, okay? Get the fuck plugged on and warming up, okay? All right? I'm interested to know how you're doing at the moment. How are you feeling? How's, how's life in lockdown? Well, the, um, the lockdown is, is fortunately doesn't affect me um, and the football fraternity. I mean, we, you know, we're pretty much on routine, really. I mean, we can't go and have a beer or you know, get a meal. But ultimately, we're very fortunate to, to be amongst um, a peer group and, and, and enjoying life and um, here. Um, the league table, yeah, we're happy. I was really unhappy at Christmas. Uh, you know, uh, them defeats when you, we were so dominant down here against Hampton and, and uh, like more dominant in a game that we've lost than I can ever remember. If you come up short and you end up, you know, fifth or sixth, which is not where you want to be, uh, you know it'll be matches just like that. So every time you have one of those games, it is a nail in the coffin. We've got a big job here today. My coach reckons we ain't quite focused yet and I trust him, okay? Come on, lads. Make sure we do ourselves proud here and be ready for this game, okay? Let's not give them a fine margin by being a little bit switched off. Let's make sure this warm-up's really good. Interestingly, Mark is joined today by his friend and potential future employee, former Premier League defender Jamie O'Hara. Yeah, but he's saying they've got three centre backs three playing. Centre and two full backs playing. Well, they might match you up. Good luck they do that. Yeah, can't, won't be able to keep up here. If they, no. they just run around, mate. They like they just work hard. Yeah, I can't see him having a, a four, like a three four three in him. Think, I don't think he'd do that. No. Do I like dog anything? Burger? I'll get it brought over. I'm on no. a diet, mate. I'm on a diet. Oh yeah. Making a comeback. <laughs> Holding midfielder for Dorking in the next couple of months. Briggsy, that's a fucking great warm up, mate. I've been watching that. You are about to be on fire. You are fucking playing well, Briggsy. I love that. Your score today. Your score today. Literally run it in the net on, if you need nice to. Keep well, running. We'll give you instructions as to how they're playing. We're not quite sure. John the Bible says they've got three centre backs playing. So, I'm, you know, so we're not quite sure whether they're going to be, you know, a bit left field and try and be creative. You know, think about how you want to feel now. Because you can't do anything about it afterwards. Think about how you want to feel now. Right? Imagine if, imagine if, you know, we didn't get the result we want today. Seven days of thinking about that. Fuck that. Right? Play every game like it's your fucking last. 
the minute the fucking whistle goes. We have to have the mindset that says we will never be outworked. There's no way they can have more quality than you. It can't happen. We know that. You all know that. So let's make sure no one's going to come here and outwork us. Right? But we respect this opposition today, boys. Respect them a lot. Okay? Come on. I'm pretty, I'm pretty certain, according to Wheeler, they're a 3 5 2 because it mate has just told Wheeler, and John the Bible said it as well. If they are, then this is where we need Callum, Baz, you are the overload. Okay? Yep, yep. Baz, travel, Baz, travel, travel! It doesn't take long for the game to provide its first moment of magic. Oh, in the opening stages, Dorking assert possessional dominance. The defence establishes a high line where they control the ball as Mark requested. This side, this side, Baz, Baz, this side! Kane, can we get it? Kane! Kane, can we get it? A driving run from Matt Briggs after five minutes provides Dorking's first threat without actually troubling Dean Snedker in the Hemel goal. A free kick two minutes later reveals that Mark White has completely forgotten he has a coach who is specifically tasked with planning set pieces. Tell him! Macca! Oh, sorry. Did they know what they're doing? Have they changed it now? Could I said that? Actually, where Macca? Is he or not? Help me out, I'm just shouting about nothing. Callum Kennedy's free kick at least provides the first shot on target. Hemel themselves threaten for the first time as Liam McDevitt marauds down the left, his cross narrowly evading the head of BJ Christie. With their clear height advantage, Hemel's high balls become a key theme of the game. Sam Mantum's free kick is headed goalwards by Nathan Cooper, only for Sam Howes to make a stunning save. That's the six I told you about, he's the target. Hemel's confidence is growing and they begin to take the attacking initiative. Kano, you, mate, I'm watching the whole game. Trust me, you've left us five on three. When striker Alfie Rutherford drops deep to pick up the ball, he invokes his manager's easily discovered wrath. Alfie, you just fucked up the whole move by going there. Just so you fucking know. I've told you, stay out of the fucking way! Hemel's growing confidence will only add to the stress on the bench. Midfielder Chris Paul combines with Sammy Carruthers, whose wayward pass nearly nestles in the far corner. Alfie, why are you doing it? Mate, listen to me. There is no impact you're going to have on the day. Fucking about there. A rare muscle injury for winger Niall McManus forces Dorking into a first half change. Take them on, commit and get shots off. Yeah, yeah. Get in the box, get in the box. Okay? No. The paucity of Dorking's attacking threat is summed up by an intricate corner sequence that ends without coming close to a goal. Shot on target. On the verge of half time, BJ Christie somehow draws a foul by simply bending over and backing into Ed Harris, whose display of absolute power in the air only leads to a Hemel free kick. Harry Kane has a lot to answer for. And that free kick is headed down by McDevitt, and the ball eventually lashed home by striker JJ Lacey. All the away side have to do now is fend off Dorking for a few minutes in order to go in at half time with a lead. And with time ebbing away, Dorking go long. A ball over the top to Luke Moore puts the midfielder into the penalty area. Hemel fullback McDevitt has already provided one goal, and with Moore going nowhere, he looks to provide another. Although on second viewing, Luke Moore falls over like Mo Salah traversing an ice rink on roller skates. I want Callum on it, yeah. If there's one rule you can always rely upon in football, always trust a left-footed penalty taker. With just seconds remaining, Dorking somehow carve out their best open play chance of the half. Matt Briggs picks out James McShane, but his shot is blocked before reaching the goal. It's all square at half-time. Let me tell you something, Dartford, one down. St Albans, two down. 
These things matter. These things matter. It's only half time, but I'll tell you what, we get a win. Because these days happen in the season when you go home going, fuck me, one week, ago, one week ago today, we were at Hampton and we're like deflated, we got a point. We go out of here today with three and all the oppo lost and we're going home going, fucking go on. And that's what's great about football. So we determine that now. We determine that. How can they beat you? Yeah, if the ball's in play and you do what you can do, how can they beat you? The only way, they're not going to beat you with a phase of play in the month of Sundays, are they? Never lose the team you shouldn't lose to. You know, and that sounds fucking stupid, but you know, this is not a team we should give a goal to. So let's just lock up for what it's worth. Kane, like when you went on that fucking headless chicken run, that's just left the door wide open. Don't bother. Don't give a team like this an opportunity, right? Sitting there, your passing's been fucking brilliant. For me, get on the outside of them, lock the game up, play to keep a clean sheet, and we'll get a goal. Okay, boys, come on. Come on. This is a chance for them, this, you know what I mean? Look, look, here. That's how they play though, that's fucking football. Go on, Jimmy, keep going, keep going. He hasn't touched him. The fucking dive, man. Mark's disgust at cheating is commendable, but his reaction is not something the referee particularly approves of. Don't blame me, you got in the way of the ball. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a dive. The outburst. There's no contact. The outburst is not. If there's no let, contact. Let the okay, just say one thing. If there's no contact, it has to be a dive, doesn't it? No, not necessarily. Yeah. Don't, don't infuriate the situation. Beat that. Be fair, he had his arm in his back. I'll call it as I see it. It's soon after Mark's war against cheating that the game's defining moment takes place. A Hemel attack breaks down when Luke Moore dispossesses the marauding Nathan Cooper. James McShane finds Barry Fuller and his pass around the fullback sends Alfie Rutherford into space. With little more in his mind than getting the ball into the mixer, Rutherford catches out goalkeeper Dean Snedka. Hold on the side of that maybe. Oh, Dean Snedka's gone down. Keeper must have been out of position because he wouldn't have shot otherwise, would he? We have to put height on, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we have to make it. It's, it's kind of like the, it's it's the fucking best of the best. If that makes sense, oh, yeah, it's not. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. As Mark ponders ways to shore up at the back, Matt Briggs is busy getting in behind Hemel. His efforts eventually lead to a West Fogden drive that cracks against the Hemel crossbar. Loads of talking, loads of talking, Dan. Defend like a Trojan, OK? With Dorking edging into the lead, it's time for Dan Gallagher to come on and do what he does best, act as a one-man defence, with other men defending around him. Kane! 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 Do it! Jimmy! Baz! A rather disorganised free-kick routine very nearly finishes Hemel off. <laughs> fucking hell, why are you all so fucking big? They're going RAF now, that's for sure. The introduction of the remarkably tall Kyle Ajay will provide Gallagher and company with a significant aerial and physical test. One on one all day, get him in the box! Hemel are pushing forward, but Dorking still provide a threat on the counter. Jimmy Mewitt's tricky run very nearly brings the third goal. Unlucky six! Under pressure, Dorking hold firm at the back, and even when Barry Fuller is beaten, Dan Gallagher comes to his rescue with a clean tackle that rattled striker Reggie Young's ancestors. Come on, lads. Win the game, Briggsy. Matt Briggs has Dawkins' last chance to make it three, but at the other end, Sam Howes is about to make sure Hemel get one of their own. His pass going straight to an opponent's feet. Unfortunately for the goalkeeper, Hemel don't make the most of it. Sam! Sam! The goalkeeper's error enrages his manager, but Dawkins hold on for the win nonetheless. And your final score then, Dawkins Wanderers 2. Cheers boys. Cheers soon mate. Cheers boys. Well done. Well done boys. Well done lads. Well done. <laughs> How'd that go in? That goal just, you just smashed it. Prize back next week anyway. Don't matter fuck now. There's no clubs even going loan to and all fucking no one's playing. Sam, when you just kicked the ball to that bloke, what went through your head for that split second? What, 
Oh, did, you, did, did, did you think at any point you'd play again? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. If that had scored, that would have been your last ever game. I swear to God, I'm not mucking about. Mate, listen, you've had a fantastic game. You've played so well. Just be an insurance player. That, put a foot on it. Career ended. <laughs> I'm joking, Sam. Don't quit. Right. <laughs> right, I've got to say, I want to praise, um, well, all of you. Great result. I thought Barry and Dan, under pressure, unbelievable defending. I've got to say, listen, Ed Harris, obviously, Callum, great defending across the 90. That last 15, 20 minutes, the interceptions and blocks you both done were fucking outstanding and they made a big difference. A big difference. Real ballsy defending. Body on the line. Great stuff. And to be fair to you, I thought the little foul second half, you've done a great job. You know, barring a little shit one on you, Alfie, you've done there. But that's fine margin. That, that costs us. That, that's, if they score from that, that's as bad as it is. But that's the difference between you, right, at, at your age. It is an age thing, right, and the experienced boys at 40 odd, right? That's the bottom line. That is the difference, yeah? That's the difference. It's the difference. It is. Yeah, you've got to think, mate, I ain't going to get sacked tonight. I'll put my foot on the ball. Right, it's experience. That's why, that's why teams are built on experience. That's why kids don't win shit. Okay, right. Imagine a team just of Alfie, Jimmy, fucking Sam. Oh my days. <laughs> Niall, is he young? He must be. <laughs> no, listen. <laughs> uh, I thought we pressed the ball really well. And the only thing that, 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 that you right, Nicky? What's the matter, mate? You won't be laughing next Saturday. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> Um, listen, the only thing missing today really was just scoring goals at good times and just putting them to bed, do you know what I mean? I thought it was really good, boys, really good. That's a, that's a tiny little league run, you know, all of a sudden, bosh, great week, two wins, rivals lose, and that's what happens in football. So well done, good work. <laughs> Week's a long time in football, so... Um, this time last week we've won one in four, two wins out of two, seven points out of nine, moved up the table, quite good togetherness in the squad and a week off to get ready for a cup game. So, you know, ticked a lot of boxes this week, really. <laughs> I'm Dan Gallagher. I'm a full-time plumber and part-time footballer for Dawkin. <laughs> how long have you been at Dawkin? Uh, this is my second season. Okay, and how are you finding it? Yeah, really enjoying it. Um, I was only at Leverett before, which just around the corner. Um, they're obviously rivals, but when, uh, when Mark was interested, it was a no-brainer, really, to come here. And, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. How are you feeling about being on the bench at the moment? Um, is it frustrating, or are you, do you, are you just the power? It, it is very frustrating. I, know, I knew at the start of the season there'd be competition for places. We've got a big squad, a very good squad. And um, it is frustrating, but the team's doing very well, so... It's, I can't go complaining to the gaffer when the team's playing well. And even though we've had a few iffy results, um, I think we've won our last two or three, but before that we had a few iffy ones, but we're, st we're still playing well. And I, I can't really expect the gaffer to change it when we're playing well. And at the moment, that's my job to come on and see games out. And if that's what he wants me to do, I'll do it. <laughs> when I was on the bench today, it was one all. And I just knew as soon as we go two one up, I was like, that's me, I'm coming on to see the game out for the gaffer. Um, but yeah, I know what you mean, but at the same time, I'm enjoying it. I'm getting a bit of game time. Some people aren't even getting in the squad, you know. Um, but yeah, if that's what he wants me to do, I'll do it. I mean, up, up until now, the boys have kind of kept him out. I mean, he, he, but he's so, you know, we've got four players uh, that, that could all play, and there's three positions. Um, he's doing exceptional, and he's playing for a National League team. We signed him from Leatherhead. Um, in the league below, um, a lever team that you know was a mid-table side, and he's now in a you know a, a side that's at the top of the table, uh, near the top of the table, um, in the national league. He's a young lad. He's improving all the time. And Rome weren't built today. So you've got one brother playing at the same level as you now. Yeah. One brother playing at a lower level. And yeah. One brother playing at Premier League. Level. Yes. Um, What's that like between the four of you? Do you have a lot of banter around that? Uh, yeah, we do, yeah. Um, obviously, the youngest one's the good one. Um, he's, he's always been the better one, even though me and Jake, the one I'm with here, we, had, we were pros earlier on in our career, but it didn't quite work out for us. Um, but no regrets from us. Like, we wouldn't take anything away 
from what we've done uh, that would affect Connor. Like we're we're so happy for him. He deserves it. He works so hard, and um, yeah, I just I just love watching him play and look forward to seeing how he does. And I know he's going to grow and be a massive player. What's it like in? The household for you when you get home after a good result after a day like yeah, that. Yeah, brilliant. I mean, I'm in the bedroom reading the kids a story. You know what I mean? That's how it works. You know, everything's different. Uh, no one's hiding. Um, people, <laughs> people aren't wearing crash helmets. So that's how it works. I mean, that's how it works. So that's just, that's just um, the highs and lows of being in football. And I'd like to think for the players, well, put it this way: if they weren't that way, then they wouldn't be here. I'd like to think they uh, take it personally too. Uh, it, it, you need a good couple of hours to calm down. <laughs> if we lose, if we lose, um, no one wants to mention it, and the first one to mention it, it will go silent. <laughs> so, um, but it is what it is. So they'll, they'll be happy tonight, you know. In order to keep Bunch of Amateurs going, we need to grow. We need you to hit subscribe and tell your friends about us.